Hello everyone. Back again with film recaps. The movie begins with a team of individuals clad in hazmat suits rushing to a house in response to a distress call. It's nighttime and raining out when they arrive. As they enter, they find lifeless bodies with rotting, blackened flesh, victims of an unfamiliar and lethal disease. Amid this grim scene, they spot a man known as Mr. Porter. His body is drenched in sweat but there seem to be no signs of any disease or infection on him. The man is then forcefully dragged out by the hazmat-clad team. Their primary concern is containing him to prevent any potential spread of the infection. Despite their efforts, Mr. Porter resists, his fear and confusion getting the better of him. After a brief struggle, they manage to subdue him and place him inside a specially designed containment box. This box is promptly shipped to a remote island facility. Back at the facility, the head scientist named Dr. Edwards arrives, while receiving a briefing from two colleagues named Camilla and Bridget about the disease's alarming spread in various locations. Acknowledging this troubling news, the head scientist reveals that their immediate priority is Mr. Porter, who is considered patient zero in this outbreak. Before proceeding, he asks any employees with families to leave, keeping only those willing to risk their lives or choosing to stay. With only the dedicated staff members remaining, they cautiously open Mr. Porter's containment box and initiate an interrogation. The head scientist introduces himself and implores Mr. Porter to cooperate. However, Mr. Porter's panic and concern for his family escalate, leading to aggressive behavior that forces the staff to stun him temporarily. Amidst the commotion, Bridget accidentally releases a lab rat. The doctor attempts to console Mr. Porter, revealing the devastating truth that his entire family has succumbed to the disease. However, Mr. Porter remains in denial, saying that his son starts school soon and they have to buy pencils and books. The doctor finally discloses the critical fact that the world is almost on the verge of a pandemic. The virus is spreading at an alarming rate. Mr. Porter seems to be the only known individual with immunity to the disease, making him indispensable in the quest for a cure. That is why they have resorted to such forceful means to bring the man here. Despite everything, the grieving man steadfastly refuses to offer his assistance. Consequently, the doctor has no choice but to sedate him, temporarily quelling the turmoil in the pursuit of a solution to this mysterious and deadly virus. Meanwhile, on the other side, a man named Marcus is en route to his wedding to marry his beloved fiancé named Kate Arias. Along the way, he picks up his closest friend, Dobbs, and together, they make their way to the wedding venue. The wedding is set on an island. During the wedding ceremony, Kate says a toast to Marcus's absent parents and brother, who have not arrived at the wedding. Surprisingly though, while she is toasting, they spot Marcus's brother, Josh, arriving at the venue. He is wearing casual clothes and looks more as if he is someone who crashed their wedding instead of being the groom's brother. The fiancé, sensing the need for some urgency, asks Marcus to have a heart-to-heart -heart with his brother and ensure he behaves appropriately on their special day. As Marcus goes to talk to his brother, he finds that his brother has brought along with him a girl too. She turns out to be none other than Marcus's ex, Penny. Kate watches this from afar and is visibly sad while her father looks extremely disappointed too. Shortly after, the group proceeds to go look around the town, putting aside the underlying tensions for the time being. Marcus and his fiancé, joined by their friends, roam around and explore the town together. However, during their excursion, Penny encounters a local woman speaking in the island's native language. She grabs her hand and tries to give a strange amulet to her. Penny is reluctant and keeps refusing, but the woman insists that she keep it for her protection from the evil spirits. Fortunately, Dobbs understands the language and serves as a translator for Penny. He tells her that the woman is earnestly trying to give it to her and is not trying to sell the amulet. She warily takes it but brushes off the warning. Penny is still skeptical though and she is assuming that such mystical events only occur in less developed countries. With their sightseeing concluded, the group soon arrives at a port. There they surprise Marcus with an invitation to a bachelor party on a secluded island by a yacht. Turns out Josh and Dobbs prepared this gift for Marcus. The man initially hesitates, seeing as Penny is also going with them but then after Kate persuades him, he finally decides to join in. Before long, the boys and Penny embark on their journey, leaving Kate behind to enjoy her own time with her family who have arranged a small party for their daughter. Meanwhile, within the confines of the island facility, Mr. Porter remains imprisoned within a quarantine room. He is singing a children's song which he defines to be a symbol of protest against injustice. The scientist with short, black hair, known as Camilla, pays him a visit in an attempt to strike up a conversation. However, Mr. Porter's agitation is palpable. He refuses to talk straight, a result of the repetitive experiments he's been subjected to. Camilla tries her best to calm him down, but he adamantly demands to speak with his wife. He demands that he too has rights, and treating him like some experimental subject is not what he deserves. Camilla is unable to calm him down. Shortly after, Bridget enters the scene and delivers the news that Mr. Porter's wife, Christina, is indeed aware of his situation. She tells him that she had a conversation with his wife, and turns out she knows about their son, she also relays that she loves Porter. This revelation has a soothing effect on him, and he reluctantly agrees to cooperate with their plans, at least for the time being. 
However, after Bridget leaves, Mr. Porter contacts Camilla and issues a chilling threat, warning that he poses a danger to the entire facility if his patients were thin. Camilla, deeply troubled by Mr. Porter's words, approaches doctor to discuss the situation. She's taken aback when she overhears the doctor referring to Mr. Porter as a specimen rather than a human being. This sparks a heated argument between Camilla and Dr. Edward. The latter, however, firmly asserts that Mr. Porter could indeed become a dire threat to humanity unless he is instrumental in finding a cure. He tells her that sometimes it is important to harm one if they want to save millions. In ethical dilemma, as the tension mounts, Mr. Porter's actions seem to validate the doctor's concerns. He begins with a jagged piece of metal he procured from a fence, and uses his own blood to infect one of the staff members, who was attempting to draw blood from him. This chaotic turn of events leads to the other staff member abandoning the infected one, and threatening Mr. Porter at gunpoint. The man seems thrilled by this, and urges the man to shoot him so that his misery could end once and for all. But the man quickly backs away and closes the door, refusing to shoot him. Fortunately, a semblance of order is eventually restored, and Mr. Porter is properly contained once more. However, this incident triggers a facility-wide lockdown, leaving only Mr. Porter and the infected staff member isolated in the room. All the others are transferred to the evacuation bunker for two days where they wait for re-entry clearance. Meanwhile, Camilla and Bridget find themselves alone in the now locked down facility, grappling with the unfolding crisis. Back on the yacht, the boys are reveling in the joy of Marcus's bachelor party. After some laughter and camaraderie, they decide to present Marcus with his wedding gifts. Marcus unwraps the gifts from Dobbs and Josh, who poke a little fun at him. Soon, the atmosphere takes an unexpected turn when Penny offers Marcus her gift, a memento from their past relationship. This gesture makes Josh visibly uncomfortable, putting a halt to the festive mood. In a bid to lighten the mood, the boys revert to their earlier habit of teasing Marcus about his fiancée. This time, however, it pushes Marcus to his limits, prompting him to storm out of the gathering. Penny follows him to the yacht cabin and takes a moment to explain that the boys are simply saddened by the prospect of Marcus's marriage, because they think that he would be absent from their lives afterward. Marcus understands their perspective, but he also wants them to know that he would not leave them behind, thus they also need to grow up and understand stuff. All of a sudden, this shameless woman comes onto him, stripping off the little garments that she wears. Penny attempts to seduce Marcus, but he firmly declines. He is loyal to Kate and is also mindful of her current relationship with his brother, unlike her. Before things can get out of hand, he swiftly leaves the room to go back outside, near the people who are unaware of the awkward encounter. Later, Marcus and Dobbs notice what appears to be a deserted island in the distance. However, Marcus spots a building on that supposedly uninhabited island. Curious, Dobbs questions the yacht's captain about the building, to which he replies that there shouldn't be anyone there. The group quickly get off the yacht and transfer to a smaller boat to reach the island. They say their farewell to the captain who would be returning the next day to pick them up. After arriving at the island, Dobbs and Marcus stay back to set up a camp, while Josh and Penny venture out for a beachside dive. As Marcus and Dobbs get started with their chores, Marcus tells his friend how Kate's father offered him a job at his firm. Dobbs does not look too happy with this revelation. Meanwhile, Josh and Penny's underwater expedition takes an unsettling turn when Penny is shocked to discover the decaying corpse of a swordfish. Disturbed, she swiftly swims back to the island, with Josh following closely behind. On the shore, Penny recounts her unsettling encounter with the fish from the sea. However, no one takes her seriously. Josh points out that it must be some shark attack leftovers or something. The two boys who stayed back on the island, now stoned, find this situation rather amusing and burst into laughter. Josh, on the other hand, also brushes off his girlfriend's concerns and goes to get high with the boys. Poor Penny, feeling frustrated and misunderstood, goes back inside the tent alone to dry off. The woman's emotions get the better of her on this strange and unexpected island. However, as she is drying off, she feels strange itching and sees bloody rashes on her arms. All of a sudden, her nose starts bleeding too. Back at the island facility. The scientists' concerns escalate as they monitor the infected staff member. The man calls out from the quarantine room and shouts for help. He says that he does not need a doctor but rather a witch. This man believes this disease to be more of a curse than a pandemic. The group of scientists soon discover that the disease carried by Mr. Porter is far more dangerous than they initially thought. In response to this dire situation, they decide to administer an experimental vaccine and a test bid to find a cure. The doctor instructs Camilla to distract Mr. Porter while he tends to the infected staff along with Bridget. When the woman informs him about the limited supply of hazmat suits due to the lockdown, the doctor decides to use the last remaining suit for himself since he will be directly administering the vaccine. He urges Bridget to trust him and join him in this operation, even without a protective suit. Bridget reluctantly agrees, understanding the urgency of the situation. As Camilla initiates a conversation with Mr. Porter over the phone to serve as a distraction, the duo enter the room. However, Mr. Porter quickly realizes her intentions, growing angry and cutting off the conversation. Meanwhile, the doctor and Bridget take the infected staff member to another containment room to begin the vaccine trial. 
As the vaccine is administered, the infected staff member experiences severe seizures and begins vomiting, his condition deteriorating rapidly. The doctor calls for Bridget to come inside and hold him down while he administers the injection. Mustering up her courage, the woman enters but unluckily, the infected man vomits blood all over her. This unexpected turn of events causes Bridget to panic, and in a moment of rage, she locks the doctor inside the containment room before rushing to a decontamination shower. Back at the campsite, the boys hear Penny calling out for Josh, leading him to think that it might be a romantic moment. However, as he enters the tent, he's taken aback by the sight of Penny's rashes. While Josh initially attributes it to the salt bar, Penny knows it's a result of her encounter with the decaying fish in the sea. Josh manages to calm her down and offers her some medicine to alleviate her discomfort. He gets up to go and get the medicine when Penny notices the same rash on Josh's legs. She freaks out and the man barely manages to calm her down. Back outside, Dobbs and Marcus have a heart-to-heart. -heart. Marcus confesses that the girl he dated way back that one time was none other than Penny. Dobbs is shocked and it turns out that even Josh is unaware of the secret. Marcus asks him to keep it that way since now he has nothing to do with her anyway. Back inside the tent, after calming Penny down, Josh starts massaging her to ease her discomfort. Then they start making love but to his horror, chunks of flesh stick to his mouth during this process. Penny screams and suddenly vomits blood in his direction. Josh freaks out and hastily exits the tent. In the meantime, Marcus and Dobbs also arrive at the scene. Witnessing this distressing situation, they decide to radio for help, but soon realize that the yacht is out of their range. There is no reception and the small boat can only go so far. They reluctantly conclude that they'll have to wait until dawn for a potential rescue. As night falls, Marcus and Dobbs recall the mysterious building they spotted on the island and decide to investigate. Henny and Josh stay back while the other two decide to go look for the building. It is worth a shot than staying there, wallowing in grief. After looking around for a bit, Dobbs gets a little impatient and asks Marcus to go back. But Marcus does not budge. They get into an argument because Dobbs thinks that Marcus is doing all this for Penny when in reality, he is doing it for his brother. Angry, Dobbs storms off but soon spots the bunker. He calls out to Marcus and they cautiously enter. Meanwhile, Josh checks on Penny and informs her that Marcus and Dobbs are searching for help. Penny, seeing her rashes worsen, advises Josh to leave the boys and flee the island together but Josh refuses. He then notices the rashes on his arm worsening and goes outside saying that he will try to radio for help. Panicking, he applies alcohol to himself in an attempt to prevent infection but to no avail. The pain worsens, making him scream. Inside the bunker, Marcus and Dobbs proceed deeper in search of a radio to call for help. However, Dobbs is overwhelmed when he discovers blood within the bunker. Suddenly, the facility door locks, trapping them inside. They press on, hoping to find an exit. Back at the beach, Josh continues to call for help on his walkie-talkie. Unaware of the unfolding chaos within the facility and the perilous situation Dobbs and Marcus find themselves in. Just as things seem dire, Dr. Edwards receives Josh's call on the other end and answers it promptly. Upon hearing of their deteriorating condition, the doctor instructs Josh to head to the facility for assistance. On the other side, inside the bunker, Marcus and Dobbs look around for potential exits. Soon they come across an emergency exit with blood near the floor. They become a little wary at first but soon decide to go over. Back on the other hand, Josh rushes to Penny's side, attempting to lift her. However, as he pulls her arms, Penny's skin peels off horrifyingly, leaving them both in shock and despair. Following doctor's directions, Josh decides to make his way to the facility alone, hoping to find help for Penny. Back to the bunker. The boys keep on treading along the emergency exit but there seems to be no way out. Along the way, they hear strange noises and call out asking for help. No one responds. Soon they come upon a strange lab that has been trashed. They keep on hearing strange noises all around. Marcus follows the noise to a door nearby and goes inside to check. Luckily there is no one there. They both take a breath of relief. Sadly. Their relief is short-lived as they are soon ambushed by a mutated individual who brandishes a gun, intent on harming them. Terrified, the boys run for their lives. Soon they stumble upon a red-lit room filled with water. Dobbs in his hysterical fit of fear, runs inside the water littered with corpses, raising the possibility of getting infected. Marcus calls out to his panic-stricken friend to snap him out of it, but the boy is too stunned to respond. All of a sudden, one mutated corpse gets out. In his fear, Dobbs abandons Marcus and flees. Left all alone with the infected, Marcus fights back. He uses the axe to hit the man in the skull, causing him to collapse. He then takes the axe and moves forward to stumble upon a room, filled with research related to the disease. Meanwhile, Dobbs runs into another infected individual and crumbles to the floor. The infected man has a gun and he intends to shoot him, but luckily the man survives due to the gun recoiling, and the infected man's wrist snapping. Dobbs then grabs the gun and rushes for an exit. Outside, he unexpectedly crosses paths with Josh. As Dobbs learns that both Penny and Josh are infected, he brandishes the gun, telling Josh to stay away. All of a sudden, Marcus also arrives and Dobbs points the gun at both of them. Marcus is disappointed to see his friend betray him. As both the brothers try to corner him, Dobbs reveals to Josh that Penny is Marcus's ex-girlfriend, sparking tension between the two brothers. The brothers argue back and forth, driven to the brink of a fight, much to Dobbs's amusement. However, to everyone's surprise, the brothers had only faked their fight to disarm Dobbs and take his gun. 
After disarming Dobbs and punching this menace right in his face, they proceed to the doctor's laboratory, where they encounter Bridget and Camilla. Bridget is infected and her flesh is slowly peeling off. They see this horrifying sight but still request the scientists to help them. Together they proceed to meet Dr. Edwards. Upon meeting the doctor, they quickly request him to cure Penny and Josh but the doctor looks like he couldn't care less. Mr. Porter reveals his suspicion that the doctor only lured them to the facility to steal their boat. The doctor vehemently denies this accusation, emphasizing that they need to access the bunker and save all the others. It's then that Marcus drops the bombshell. All the others in the bunker are already lifeless. Realization dawns on Camilla as she hears about how they caught infection after going into the water. She deduces that the water supply line from the bunker must have been contaminated. She urges them to find the facility's self-destruct button, as it is the only means to contain the virus and prevent its spread. Marcus, determined to help, instructs Dobbs and Josh to gather Penny, Bridget, and the doctor so they can all make their way to the yacht before dawn. The two teams separate to accomplish their respective tasks. Marcus and Camilla lead Mr. Porter to the Red Room housing the facility's self-destruct mechanism and set it up. They then follow the path back to the beach, ready to reunite with the other team. Meanwhile, the other team is on their way to the boat. Bridget, eager to ensure their escape, asks Josh about the boat's location. However, just as he discloses the location, she violently strikes Josh's head, causing his jaw to detach and fly off. With a horrific injury, Josh's ability to communicate is severely impaired and he falls down. Meanwhile, Bridget makes a desperate run for the boat. On the other side, the doctor finds himself held at gunpoint by Dobbs, seizing an opportunity to distract him. The doctor begins describing the progression of Dobbs's infection stage in detail. As he leans in to listen, the doctor seizes the moment to knock him out, taking his gun. In a shocking turn of events, the doctor shoots Dobbs, incapacitating him. As Bridget reaches the boat and tries to push it afloat, Penny notices and confronts her. This leads to a physical confrontation between the two women. Penny tears at the scientist's hair and Bridget tears off Penny's skin in return. The ugly fight continues and Penny succeeds in taking her opponent's life, but at what cost? She herself starts getting weaker by the second and passes away shortly. Meanwhile, Marcus's team makes their way to the beach and discovers Dobbs and Josh's bodies. In a fit of rage, Marcus rushes to the beach to confront the doctor and sees Penny and Bridget's corpses. While he is in shock, the evil doctor catches him off guard. Marcus drops his gun and is pushed back by the doctor. Camilla rushes to his side but the doctor explains that their deaths are necessary to contain the virus. Just as the doctor is about to make his move, Mr. Porter manages to grab the dropped gun and shoot him in the neck. As the doctor falls to his demise, Camilla says his own words back to him. In order to save millions, they must be willing to sacrifice one. The situation takes a sudden turn as the island initiates a self-destruct sequence. With no time to spare, the three remaining survivors hurry to the small boat to reach the yacht that has just arrived desperately trying to escape the impending disaster and containment breach. In the aftermath of the incident, Marcus confines in Camilla, revealing that the infection in the bunker began with a lab rat, as indicated in the records he discovered. Camilla has an alarming realization that the contamination of the water supply traced back to the lab rat, the same rat that Bridget inadvertently set free earlier. However, they remain perplexed about how the rat became infected in the first place. Suddenly, a shocking turn of events unfolds as Mr. Porter shoots the yacht's captain and takes control of the vessel. Panic sets in as Camilla realizes that Mr. Porter has infected them. The situation becomes even more dire when Camilla starts exhibiting signs of rashes, confirming their worst fears. A flashback reveals the unsettling truth. Mr. Porter had stolen the radio from the abandoned hazmat-suited individual and impersonated the doctor. He was the one responsible for infecting the lab rat, which was released by Bridget. This act triggered the infection spread throughout the bunker, and subsequently, the entire island. The movie comes to a chilling conclusion as Mr. Porter sets course for the mainland, harboring sinister intentions of spreading the infection across the entire world. Probably an act of revenge for the days of imprisonment and sure that he suffered.